What's going on guys? Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, a customer has sent me their Ryzen 7 B-Link mini PC to be made into a touch edition mini PC. Let's take a look at it as it is the first one to ever get the newly emulated Mega Touch. Yeah. Mega Touch is on this now. All right, guys, you know, Joe, if not follow me on all the socials, what are you waiting for? Be sure to follow me at Vic underscore VP, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. There's a convenient link tree link down below. Go click it. It'll just bring you to all the socials. It makes your life easy. Also, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you think about this Touch Edition mini PC. And also, let me know what you think about Mega Touch being emulated. All right, this one I'm a little bit excited for because it's been a while since I've done a video talking about the Touch Edition. I'll be honest, I have gotten many emails, many requests, many drives have gone out. I'm just the type of person where I don't like to do drives. 99% of the time, it's never plug and play, which then means that people will email me and they start questioning. So if you ever did inquire about a Touch Edition, which I'll be honest, 95% of the time is, hey Vic, I just need the files. That's where I kind of resulted in doing drives. But I have a couple of key, very important things that I say you do need for my drive to work. And the biggest thing I do say, yes, I offer zero tech support or assistance on drives. I'm, you might not like that. People are like, wow, Vic, that's, that's like, you know, you're, you're a dick. I don't deal with that. It's a steep discount when I sell out the drives and it's not plug and play. I've been saying this now for the past 14, 15 years, nothing in this world is plug and play. There's always things that need to be configured. If you want it to be plug and play, you gotta do what this guy did, where he sent me the PC. I have it physically in my hands. I configure software and I launch every single game to make sure that it works. This way it's truly plug and play. Now it's great to see people are still interested in the Touch Edition. It's been a while since I kind of released the Touch Edition, I showed it off. Since then I have done several all-in-one sales, which basically is where I get an all-in-one PC and I set up and configure everything. There is a price for that. And then there's also a price for just the drive and the file. So I do offer best of both worlds. It's just, again, when I do these drives only, I like to help, but I'm just not the type to do drives. Uh, you know, it's, it's time consuming. Not that it's a bad thing. I'm a busy person. So, you know, if I get somebody who goes, Hey Vic, man, this one game isn't like launching. Why didn't it launch? I got it from you. I don't, I don't deal with that because what I learned is everybody's system, and again, I'm specifically talking about the touch edition stuff. Everybody's computer, everybody's system is different. I've made a big deal and I always said it. On these right here, this is running an older version of Simple Touch front end. And what's really great with the front end is that it's got, it utilizes Flash Player slash Shockwave. So on the front end, there's some like moving, you know, videos or moving images. For you to have that though, you need to be running a specific Windows version, which I say many times, you do need Windows 1909. That's what's on this. This is where I fully went in, configured, set up the operating system. There's so many things that need to be done because if you connect this to the internet, Windows is trying to update Windows 1909. So I have ways of blocking Windows update, but you can't do that yet until you download all the drivers, all the necessary programs, such as like the C++. There's even a couple of itbox programs that need downloading, which relies on Windows Update. Again, a lot. As you can see me just explaining it, imagine me writing that all out on an email. There's many people that go, Vic, I don't understand. Why do I need, what, like, that's exactly why I don't deal with drives. <laughs> if you want me to make it easy, you just send me it and then I will do my magic from here. Now again, it's been awesome to see people are still interested in the Touch Edition. People many times want like the virtual slots, which is cool, I don't care, it's awesome. It's 
it's a touch. It's it's a big iPad. If you really think about it, the only thing is like I have some people go, hey Vic, is there any newer PC games that came out? Not really. Um, it's also kind of hard for me to test something because I personally don't have an all-in-one PC. I do have my kiddo. We do have an actual all-in-one PC. It's very dated. Uh, I actually found it on the curb and uh, I took it. It's funny. It originally had my touch edition stuff set up on it, but now because it's the kiddos, I wiped everything off and now it runs scum VM. So if you don't know what that is, it's basically like MS DOS, old school, like, you know, MS DOS games. It's kind of cool for a three year old because she plays a couple of games from this company called like living learning books. And uh, it's basically books and she could touch the screen and it interacts. Now you might be saying, Hey Vic, like, whoa, can you add that to like these? You could look it up. It's called Exo DOS or Exo Scum VM. I would love to add that to these, but in all honesty, complete Scum VM, it's like a terabyte alone and like ROMs or more. Not to mention, not all the games though are touchscreen friendly. So I don't want to add stuff to the drive. I would rather let you customers just start adding stuff and you'll see later on in the video how you can add, you know, games to the front end. Now let's talk about the customer himself. He did shoot me an email. We were going back and forth. We basically then summarized that, hey Vic, I have this B-Link mini PC. This is actually like, it's a Sir SER5 mini PC. This is a Ryzen 7, 16 gigs of RAM. Originally it had 500 gigs uh, M.2 SSD, I assume, or an SSD. He then upgraded it to have a one terabyte M.2 SSD. When we were emailing back and forth, he actually originally had a four terabyte M.2 SSD. And he's like, hey Vic, I'm just gonna send you this four terabytes. And I was like, I'll be honest, four terabytes is a lot. It's a lot of space that I don't think, I don't think you should like use a four terabyte, four terabyte M.2s are expensive. I don't think you should use that on a touch edition. Right now, this is going out. It still has about, I would say, 400 gigs of open space, or I used 400 gigs. It's one of those. Figure my touch edition software, the drive alone, you're looking at around, let's say, 350 to 450 gigs. Vic, what? That's a big gap. I, I'd rather just be safe and say more. 400 uh, to average it out. So it's pretty cool, we came to an agreement. He was gonna send me the mini PC, but he also did send me a one terabyte SSD. Now this is kind of cool, kind of unique. Um, basically this is a backup. I cloned the software that's on this, I cloned this drive, and then I put it on this. I didn't charge extra for that, it's kind of easy. So I use Macrium Reflect, I downloaded it and I, copied it, cloned it. Luckily, this system right here, it actually allows you to have an M.2 and an SSD. So that worked out great. Now, the only thing I do wanna make a comment about this SSD because the customer later on asked me, he said, hey Vic, I'm gonna pick up an Asus all-in-one. Do you think if you, you know, this, this drive right here that is cloned, do you think I could just put this inside the Asus? And I'll be very honest, I told him, I don't think it works that way. I could be wrong. I could be right. I've been dealing with all-in-ones. All-in-ones are, not I don't want to say the word tricky, but all-in-ones have drivers specific to the hardware that is in these computers. Right now, this is cloned for this B-Link. That means all the drivers, which was kind of a headache, uh, to get, well, I had to go to the website. I had to download it. I had to go to B-Link, which is kind of a nauseating website. I had to go to B-Link and download the drivers for this specific unit. I believe if the customer puts that SSD inside of that Asus, it's definitely not gonna have the drivers. That's like a given. And drivers, some all-in-ones, they have drivers to recognize the screen as touchscreen. It has drivers to recognize like mice and mouse and all that. So I told the customer, I said, I don't really know if it's gonna work out. He'll just have to do it on his end. You're gonna see later on in this video, just to save myself, I am gonna record myself booting 
from this drive and showing that it does boot. As far as when it gets into the Asus, I can't help you there. I don't wanna repeat myself, but like I said, the, the biggest thing about configuring this stuff is the requirement for Windows 1909, especially if you want the front end to have the motion images, especially for ItBox. After ItBox, all of like the regular PC executables like PopCap and Big Fish, I don't have flash like videos for that. It's just static images. You can essentially take the files on this, bring it to newer gen, current gen windows and download Simple Touch front end. You just kind of really lose out on the motion kind of front end, the videos, the video previews. Other than that, you could, you could basically upgrade it to a newer Windows. Me personally, I don't have all-in-one PCs, so I haven't really gone into configuring the newer side of Windows. This right here, though, is pretty cool, this B-Link, is that it's a very powerful computer compared to what I usually use, which is, yes, older, refurbished all-in-ones that I get off of eBay. Usually those, the hardware components are several years old, so I was pretty happy to see like I launched BlueStacks. I was able to get newer app mobile games working on this pretty well. So that's kind of like where when you have the right hardware, you could almost play anything. Now the biggest thing I got really, really excited, also got the nudge to like finish it. I got really excited when the customer requested this touch edition because Mega Touch has been cracked slash emulated uh, there is a Facebook group that I'm in. Somebody did crack it. When I do show it off, I will obviously give props and credit to the Facebook group along with the person that posted this kind of mega touch all in one. I did though create an AHK file as I wanted it to launch in full screen. Originally, it required a couple of keyboard combos, control alt page up to be exact. Luckily with AHK, I'm able to code that in. The only downside though is to exit it, you have to use a keyboard, you have to control alt page down to minimize and then you could exit. I've tried m several AHK commands to kill the emulator when you press escape, just like arcade builds. And sadly, it just wouldn't stick. I don't know what it was, but if I do come out and I find a new or I find a way that AHK could actually kill the program, I'll let this customer know, but I'm pretty excited because he's the first one to get Mega Touch. And again, if you know me, I love my Mega Touch. I have one right there, it's off. I have one over there. Right now, it's kind of late, so I'm just shooting this video before this goes and gets sent out. I love my Mega Touch. When I saw somebody cracked it, it was the Mega Touch Max Crown Edition. So Max, a little bit on the older side, but in all honesty, it's got the main bangers, the main gems. 11 ball, photo hunt, air hockey, hoop jones, just to name a few. And this customer has it. Without further ado, let's get into it. Let's put this to the Elgato and capture everything. I do want to start out first though, showing that the SSD does boot. You might be thinking I'm weird. I just have this thing. I want to show that it works on my end. So. I'll do that first. Then we'll look at the system itself. We're gonna look at, you know, launching a couple of games. Definitely gonna be looking into launching the Mega Touch emulation. And uh, then I'll show you how to add or delete games from the front end. All right, so I just wanna show that the SSD does boot. Again, I did clone the original M.2. That's where all the work was done. And then the customer sent me out also this SSD. So I do have it all open. I wanna gently open this on up, just so you can see it. So right here, right where this kind of uh, antenna is, normally is the M.2 SSD. So I'm gonna gently put this right on back. Again, my objective in this part of the video is just to show you that the SSD does work and it does boot as intended. So I have it also just to show you also, I do have the M.2 in my hand. So without further ado, I will hit this. We're gonna let the PC boot. I have to actually grab the keyboard and mouse. Let that do its thing and boot on up. 
and as you can see, booted. Again, this is a clone. I used Macrium Reflect, you can see it there. Right now, because I have it cloned, I'm gonna delete Macrium, but I just wanna show that it's gonna do its thing. Hopefully the Elgato captures it. Again, I have it set to 30 seconds. It will automatically launch Symbol Touch front end. And uh, it's actually good I'm doing this because I'm gonna delete that Macrium Reflect. This way he doesn't get that pop-up and such. Boom, there you go. So that right there, just to show you, yes, the SSD did boot, all good here. And now for the rest of the video, I'm gonna use it as intended using the M.2. So you can see right now, the SSD is out. It's outside of the unit. I could even, if anything, put this up. This way you could actually see where that M.2 is supposed to be. It's right there. So again, there was the antenna, the Wi-Fi antenna was right here, but the M.2 now covers it. All good to go for my sanity. I'm going to seal this up. I just don't like having stuff exposed. Again, pretty nice, this B-Link, pretty cool, but I could go ahead, I have the power actually removed. Do, 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 do. There we go. I'm gonna grab the power, I'm gonna hit the power button, and this thing will boot. Again, now we are using the M.2. Right now the screen is green, that's just the Elgato like capturing, so no, the boot screen is not green. Boom, there we go. You could also see there the speed of an M.2 versus an SSD. Same thing right now, I'm gonna just let it do its thing, I'm gonna do 30 seconds, and I'm gonna delete that Macrium Reflect. I'm just gonna basically uninstall it. Macrium is a great tool. Um, anytime someone wants to do a backup, I always recommend Macrium. It's very quick, easy to do. Now, luckily with this B-Link, you are able to do both M.2 and an SSD. So luckily, cloning was fairly easy. And there you go, you can see there, Simple Touch is loaded. I have my little mouse, I just accidentally picked the game, but whatever, it's fine. It's actually funny, because this is intended for touchscreen, you can't see the mouse on certain games. So I'm gonna exit out, and I'm just gonna go into Control Panel, and I'm gonna just uninstall Macrium. All right, now we can go on with the video as I originally intended. So we're gonna go over a couple of features. We're gonna show off the games list. I'm also gonna go into FE config. We can do how many games in total. And then I do wanna also show off the Mega Touch emulation. That's pretty cool. Uh, I didn't really do much with it. Somebody on a touchscreen Facebook group that I'm in, and I'm gonna get the exact name so I can give credit. They figured out a way to emulate Mega Touch. One thing that I'm proud of, though, is that I did make a custom AHK to launch it in full screen. So there's a plus side and a minus to that. Um, the minus is it's kind of a keyboard kind of combo to minimize and then exit. I tried my hardest to basically set it to escape, just like how, you know, arcade emulation and the mule shooter with the, you know, I did my basics, but for some reason, this emulator would not take. So it is what it is. Let's start with some basics. Let's look at how the system looks. Let's look at the front end. As you can see, 30 seconds, that is a basic task schedule. I do that for all the builds. Basic task scheduler. If you don't like it, you can just go into task scheduler and then remove it. But as you can see, you have your sections here on the bottom. Again, I am using a keyboard and mouse right now. I don't have an external touch screen as this is intended for this customer, but luckily I do see the mouse. So you have your categories here. Again, trivia to word games. These four categories right here is using itbots emulation. So basically it's launching, it launches the game and it also launches a coin emulator. This way it kind of puts fake money in for you. Virtual slots and on is majority of it, you're looking at like PC games. So you have, for example, like slot machines, you have your IGT stuff. This is really, again, EXE. These are PC programs. Then you got your Big Fish, you have your PopCap, several PC games. Uh, I think the most recent one I did was like the Monkey Island stuff, so that's pretty cool. You do have also Pinball. I did try putting Pinball FX and Pinball M. Sadly, there is no touch screen like stuff, you can't touch control with those two. So Pinball FX2 and Pinball FX3 is still there. This right here is fairly new. I just did this extra games. Before it was only, um, it just had blue stacks, but 
as years go on as you can see we have blue stacks we have flashpoint which again is the flash player emulator i put that on arcade build it's pretty cool it's pretty great you have also game house max that added more games that it's basically its own front end so we'll launch that and then you do have your mega touch max all right so let's start off with the basics let's talk about the first four categories like i mentioned before it's it box emulation for this customer i physically launched each and every single game and i made sure they worked that is one thing i always do if i'm doing a build like this and i have it in my hands i like to test and make sure stuff works and stuff launches correctly so again it's kind of hard to show these off because majority of the time this emulation uh it removes the mouse so you kind of don't see the mouse anymore uh yes there is like one or two kind of naughty things going on here uh we'll launch boggle <laughs> uh yes there is a couple things i'll show you on the config that you could basically remove it boggle right now you can see i actually could see the mouse and you can see there the credit it's putting in 40 euros whatever it is pounds whatever it is it the emulation completed it launched the game and it gave out the credit now, one big thing I do get a lot, some people are like, hey Vic, I launched this game and I started it by accident, how do I exit? You will need a keyboard and you could press escape on it. If you don't have the keyboard, then you have to basically wait for the game to be over. But again, I did sit down and I launched every single game. These work, no issues. Again, Itbox emulation. This is where before I was mentioning to people, you can see like right now, I don't have the mouse. Uh, so there you go, I luckily hit exit. Um, I was mentioning to people, these are the games that are like Mega Touch. It's Mega Touch esque, it's Mega Touch style, but it's not Mega Touch games. Again, big shout out to the person that emulated Mega Touch. We'll look at that later on. And you had some other stuff like word games. Buzzle is actually a very fun game, it's actually very entertaining. The other big thing I always mention to customers you do need a keyboard and mouse. It's highly recommended. I understand it's a touch screen build, you shouldn't have a keyboard and mouse, but some games do require it i get like the cheap ones on amazon the keyboard and the mouse is like 20 25 bucks some people get the ones where it's the keyboard and then the mouse pad i don't personally like that i'm not a fan i don't like the pads i'd rather have an actual physical mouse what's kind of cool again i launched every single game for this customer so it may alleviate the need for a keyboard sometimes games definitely with big fish uh, big fish games and sometimes the slot machine games it needs you to like enter your name and luckily because i launched each game i entered like a quick v or i just hit the keyboard and all that so if you're kind of picky you would probably want to enter your actual name um again we'll just go through it we'll take a look at something i don't know we'll do slot quest cool sometimes when you launch as you can see your slot quest you have to kind of click here to play given but the main thing is that the game launches and it's in front of the front end as you can see here like again i have luckily the mouse and keyboard but if you had the touch screen you could simply just touch and touch so that's it the touch screen just mimics the left mouse click i just want to make sure that we have audio and yes it looks like we do awesome click to continue that's great again you can tap to continue you pick this you accept and then good luck close this and then you can start betting easy stuff like this is kind of you kind of look at like the location sometimes in the corners you'll see like the option to like go back or like there's, there's ways that you have to like figure out how to leave not very easy as far as like exit over here like no some games aren't really like that as you can see at the press of the menu exit are you sure yes so this right now is going to exit and it's going to bring us back into the front end so it's pretty cool there you go try to find one more game another slot machine game uh sometimes it's hoyles it's like you have to navigate the casino um let's do hoyle slots let's just see how that goes again i'm just kind of clicking away you could press play now see like here i entered the name so you could just tap okay whereas before it would need you to you know pick something with the magic carpet play standard cool again if you are into slot machine stuff like this a lot of my customers they like this because they like slot machine stuff so pretty cool you can see there, there's like an options i don't want to do that i have to actually go to main menu and then exit slots yes and then again as you can see it zooms on out kind of want to show off like one that like you need to navigate the casino 
Again, it's just, I always say it. Yes, I understand like this. See this? Like, where did the casino go? So then you have to actually like move around. You can go here. There is a way that you can actually like click the menu and then show the games like that. So kind of cool. But again, I highly recommend that you have a keyboard and mouse handy. Bringing it back to the front end, we'll launch real quick a Big Fish Games. Uh, Big Fish is kind of cool. It's a lot of like murder, mystery, find the object. Uh, again, same thing though, when you launch a Big Fish game, it always asks for like a name. You have to enter a name. So again, I launched every single game. As you can see here, like profile, true, whatever, fine. And it launches A-OK -okay, and it'll bring you right back to the front end. So pretty cool. PopCap, PopCap has a lot of games, but I focus on the ones that work with the touch screen. There's no arrow keys needed and such. Again, PC games, you have some stuff here. We have like Monopoly going on here, Monkey Island. Again, I was aiming to put more PC games, but I have a website. It's basically like it'll like, um, it'll like categorize everything into point and click, but sometimes point and click isn't really point and click. It needs like the right mouse click or it needs a hold, but we got a lot of basic stuff. We got unpacking and all that. Again, Pinball, you have Pinball FX2 and Pinball FX3. Those definitely tested. They work with the, the whole touchscreen once you get a touchscreen connected to it. Um, I'm going to launch Flashpoint. Flashpoint was pretty new um, compared to like when the last touch edition came out. Flashpoint is old school mini clip flash games. No, not every single game is touchscreen, but... You never know, you might find something. I, right now, I am actually not connected to the internet. You could be, uh, usually when I do these builds, I have, I'm hardwired connected. I did not put my Wi-Fi in, but normally you would click something and it would show you a video or a picture right here, and then you could play it slash download it. So kind of a bad example there, but yes, Flashpoint is there. You can just exit out and it brings you back. Game House, real quick. As you can see, Game House has its own front end. Not every single game is touchscreen friendly, but it's got a lot of games. It added a lot of stuff. And not to mention, it's just kind of, it's, I, I believe it's actually a 15 gig uh, front end emulator thing here. But basically you go in there and you could pick a game and play it. Majority of these are touchscreen friendly. You can even see that it said Super Nintendo. Um, you could essentially connect a controller. I have not configured that. I don't know anything. As you can see, we have right now a PopCap-esque game. And if I try to press OK, I can't. I have to put something in. That's why I always say you do need a keyboard and, hand and mouse hand. It's pretty cool. Ranch Rush? Cool. If I exit, it's going to bring me back into this Game House Max front end. So it's pretty cool. Got a lot of games to this. It, it added a lot. Um, but again, I don't believe all, every single game is touchscreen friendly. Game House Max, you can hit the power button here and it will exit out. Awesome. I'm going to talk about BlueStacks last. I want to talk about MegaTouch. All right, I want to make sure I give credit where credit is due. There is a Facebook group that I'm in. It's called the Touchscreen Machines and Tinkerers. Somebody by the name of, I'm going to butcher this name, Joss Van Morick. He basically put on an FTP FileZilla network. He has 86 bit, 86 box, something like that. He has MegaTouch emulated, okay? The big thing that I did though is that I have it running in an AHK script that will enlarge full screen stretch MegaTouch. Without this AHK script, you have to actually do Alt Control Page Up. I know, right? How, who's gonna do that? But just to show you real quick, right there, as you can see, hands-free, you saw the emulator launch and basically have a sleep set and it's set to do full screen stretch. Playing a lot on this is pretty cool to have this specifically tested on this machine. I had the sleep kind of set to different values. Um, if you wait too long, this, this screen right here, it just kept rebooting, it kept rebooting. So then it eventually, would boot. But as you can see right now, I have the timing perfect for this customer. It's going to launch. And this is just mind blowing stuff that we have mega touch. Now, granted, it's not every mega touch. It's this certain one right now that they got working mega touch max crown edition. We are in. And again, you can see that I have the mouse, 
but it's just simple clicks. You could go on ahead and play it. It's this right here, just this screen right here, blows my mind. It, it It's crazy. Again, you can even put high scores. I was playing some Monster Madness and that is an actual like quick high score I did. You press player one and you're good. Again, this should be touch screen friendly. Right now I am using a mouse. Basically got to double click just like a real mega touch. Again, this right here is mind blowing stuff. So again, shout out to the person that made this. The other thing that I did is I made an AHK file to do a full screen stretch. It's actually important that you have the full screen stretch set to the correct aspect ratio. I was playing like air hockey and I had it originally set to four by three and my mouse wasn't lining up with where like my handle was but all in all mind-blowing stuff that we have mega touch emulated and as you can see just like mega touch the top right you can exit and such like that i want to show you real quick though if i go into mega touch sports if i go into air shot again you click the green play button you can see the little video preview this is where I discovered the importance of having the full screen stretch uh, instead of four by three. So if I click here, you wanna make sure that that is going to where the mouse is. So boom, let's go. Oh, shot. there you go. <laughs> awesome, mind blowing. It's Like I said, it's so crazy. Again, if I click the top right here, it should give me the option to exit. There you go, see that? That's mega touch, top right. Again. Awesome. This has right here, this mega touch has majority of the main games that you are looking to play. Uh, I've gotten requests for run 21. I do want to see if this has 11 ball. I personally like 11 ball. Let's see if it has it. Do, 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 chug 21. Again, I'm used to my, my regular, uh, it's not 11 up. Again, it is uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Is it a strategy? 11 ball, yeah, there you go. Awesome. Again, and what's really cool, because I'm definitely gonna do it for the video, it does have photo hunt. It's got like the main photo hunt. Eight, nine, 10. Okay, this might've went kind of crazy. Oh no, there it goes, okay, cool. Eight, nine, 10, 11. Again, this is a really cool like math game. Like this is like, you should, play this with the kiddo eight nine ten eleven yeah like this 11 ball and if you get it on the touch screen oh it's a thing of beauty it's awesome and what's really cool i just discovered yeah high scores save awesome uh i believe i was doing photo hunt i will do it together i'm gonna bore you guys why not yes i'm gonna be addressing this right here this is the adult mode to it um where is my photo hunt i need my photo hunt again i'm doing this live i don't want to cut too much but i don't want to waste people's time uh, 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 is it on the puzzle? It's like, I know it's here. It's just hiding from me. It should not be a quiz and word game. Oh, is it? Nope, 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 nope. Where is it? Photo hunt. Okay, it's there. <laughs> yes, it is a quiz and word game. Yes, there you go. Photo hunt. Amazing game. Let's try to run it real quick. Let's see how this is. Oh, wow. No, I probably did the oh, wrong. touchdown bonus seems okay. The QB's arm, boom. Awesome, smoking, that's it. That's <laughs> Photo hunt is my jam. Now just for kicks, uh, no, we'll, we'll play it. You guys are just gonna have to watch me play. <laughs> Again, an, a great game. Photo hunt, oh, come on, this is it. Two, 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 we got a pink fingernail and then the six and the two. Come on, come on. I got four mega touches. I got two of them here. Awesome. Insane. We'll just right now just mess up because I don't want to bore you. I am just randomly clicking. This way, at least I could show you we could do a high score. This customer will get a semi high score Vic BP on this. <laughs> but again, it's just so crazy. It's mind blowing that somebody figured this out. Mega touch. The next step is to get like, I don't know, ion or force emulated. That would be wild. Again, yes, the player one, good stuff. So we'll do Vic VP, that is not an I. There we go. Yeah. No. Boom. Awesome. And as you can see, Vic VP, awesome. Now, when I saw this emulation, I was like, ooh, you know, the erotic section is there. So yes, this does have the adult mode, but there is a way to get into the settings 
you go into this uh, options, six star, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then you basically now have operator menu uh, set up. So you could do some game setups here. You could do game options. We'll make sure that all games are enabled. So that's A-OK, -okay. save changes, yes. But the big thing is that there is an option here that you could um, remove slash set the timer for the erotic stuff. So this is like, uh, well, you have to enable it. As you can see there, I did enable it. But there is a way to set, oh, there it is, a timer. This again is older. There you go. So you can set it to on and off. So it'll go on at, what is that, 10? 10 p.m. and it'll go off at six. So that's kind of cool to see there. You can see now it's 11.29. So this right now is saved. If I exit adult mode, erotic is gonna be gone and then we should see nothing actually. Okay, interesting. So on other mega touches, you actually have a kid zone. And as you can see, it is, uh, it's removed. If I do wanna just enable it, I'm gonna message a customer and ask, do they want that enabled? But luckily with this video, you have a quick little tutorial on how to enable it and disable it. So options, and then we could just remove the timer. And now you have erotic games enabled without a timer. Again, using this mouse, we're gonna quit, we're gonna exit, it'll bring you right back, and there you go. Now, again, the only downside to this right now, and of course I have a keyboard where the page down is like a function button. It's control alt page down that will like minimize it, but I kind of just press up and down. And as you can see there, it minimized, meaning it didn't exit, but now I could come over here and I could press exit and then we're gonna get our front and back. So just gotta keep that in mind. There is like a thing to, to see that. I had to hit escape and now we're back. That's the only thing about the AHK. So just gotta keep that in mind. Back on the front end, I usually like to end my videos showing off BlueStacks. Now, in all honesty, BlueStacks, I highly recommend that you launch BlueStacks outside of the front end. I, right now, I don't, I'm not connected to my Wi-Fi. I didn't put Wi-Fi. I've been doing this build hardwired ethernet connection. That's just how I like it. I don't like to clutter my routers and stuff. But as you can see, I have several games preloaded. And again, with this B-Link, it, it could play, you know, these higher res games pretty well. Big thing also to note, BlueStacks got an update. Previously, I, I wasn't able to get Mario Run to work, but it does work. Again, I don't have my internet connected. So I can exit this, I could launch Tapped Out with The Simpsons. I have Call of Duty, as you can see, Call of Duty Mobile. Now again, keep in mind, you could, right now this is using like a fake Gmail account that I do need customers to make. Uh, this way I could set everything up. With BlueStacks, you could actually log in with your real credentials if you want. If you play these games really on your phone, you could log in. Keep in mind though, this is Android emulation. So if you're an Apple user, I, I can't advise anything to that. Now, the real reason I want people or I suggest that you do launch BlueStacks outside of the front end, if I exit BlueStacks right now, you could kind of see here, the front end still thinks that BlueStacks is launched. So right now, like you come here, you're gonna press like escape, nothing's gonna happen, you're gonna go crazy. I just hit the Windows key. Uh, basically, you kind of wanna quit out. And then as you can see, the front end came back. Just gotta keep that in mind. I, that's why I have the BlueStacks here. I have the actual emulator here. So <coughs> back on the front end, I usually like to end my videos showing off BlueStacks. Now, in all honesty, BlueStacks, I highly recommend that you launch BlueStacks outside of the front end. I right now, I don't, I'm not connected to my Wi-Fi. I didn't put Wi-Fi. I've been doing this build hardwired ethernet connection. That's just how I like it. I don't like to clutter my routers and stuff. But as you can see, I have several games preloaded. And again, with this B-Link, it, it could play you know these higher res games pretty well. Big thing also to note, BlueStacks got an update. Previously, I, I wasn't able to get Mario Run to work, but it does work. Again, I don't have my internet connected. So I can exit this, I could launch Tapped Out with The Simpsons. I have Call of Duty, as you can see, Call of Duty Mobile. Now again, keep in mind, 
you could right now this is using like a fake gmail account that i do need customers to make uh this way i could set everything up with bluestacks you could actually log in with your real credentials if you want if you play these games really on your phone you could log in keep in mind though this is android emulation so if you're an apple user i i can't advise anything to that now the real reason i want people or i suggest that you do launch bluestacks outside of the front end if i exit bluestacks right now you could kind of see here the front end still thinks that bluestacks is launched so right now like you can come here you're going to press like escape nothing's going to happen you're going to go crazy i just hit the windows key uh basically you kind of want to quit out and then as you can see the front end came back just got to keep that in mind i that's why i have the bluestacks here i have the actual emulator here so <coughs> excuse me so if you're the type that's gonna so if you're the type that's gonna want to play bluestacks i just recommend that you launch it from the desktop and make your life easy that's really it again like i said i have my wi-fi disabled but there you go the touch edition now running actual mega touch max software it's uh it's it's pretty cool to this customer i hope you enjoy your touch edition b link mini pc build so if you're the type that's going to want to play blue stacks I just recommend that you launch it from the desktop and make your life easy. That's really it. Again, like I said, I have my Wi-Fi disabled, but there you go. The touch edition now running actual mega touch max software. It's uh, it's, it's pretty cool to this customer. I hope you enjoy your touch edition B link mini PC build. All right, so we're going to exit out of the front end, and I'm going to show you the FE config if you wanted to delete a game or add a game. So real quick, you see here on the front end, we have this like convenient power button looking thing. You just click on that, and then it will drop and exit the front end. On the desktop I have here, FE config. We can double click that, and you'll be able to configure your front end. Uh, right here on the left side here is the category. So for example, config one is the trivia. Uh, config five is the casino. Uh, big fish pop cap pc games pinball and then the extra games category that i made you can see here at the top how many games we have so let's go through it uh trivia 141 again config one to four is all it box so 141 64 20 14 37 110 126 on pop cap 30 on pc games two on pinball keep in mind though there's multiple tables within each pinball so it's not just two tables and then you have your last one which is the blue stacks flashpoint game house and mega touch so there's more games obviously in these uh it's pretty easy now if you wanted to delete a game for example we had like those adult games uh it's really only like two or three of them i don't really remember the name uh this one like this is one i love lucy so you could just simply click on one or whichever one you want to delete you right click, make sure you hover it over that, and then you press delete. And then that's it, it's gone. Now, if you wanted to add a game, I usually like to keep things uniform. Most customers, people tell me that they add more PC games. So you go into config eight, which is your PC. You click the add button here. I'll just make this say test, and then you press okay. You'll get the test there. You just set up here your executable. So you hit the folder, assign your executable. And then you could also even do the image. So you click on this square and then you put the image. I usually put the image in the same folder as the game and you're set. That's it. Very simple front end to use. I'm going to delete my test, save settings. That's it. Well, guys, there you have it. The touch edition with mega touch emulation is complete. This is going out the door tomorrow. Vic VP. Game Case Arcade.